Hi everyone, Frankie M here, and today I'm going to be showing you chloric acid. So chloric acid is one of the scariest acids I've dealt with so far. I learned how to make it quite by accident when I was experimenting with sulfuric acid and potassium permanganate. So when the two are mixed, a powerful oxidizing solution is created that um, ignites on contact with combustible materials like alcohol. So I decided to ramp things up and add the chlorate ion instead of the permanganate ion as potassium chlorate. So this results in chloric acid, a very strong and unstable oxidizing acid. Now I'm not talking about hydrochloric acid here, I'll show you my sample of hydrochloric acid. Here it is. So this acid is comprised of one hydrogen, one chlorine. Chloric acid is comprised of one hydrogen, one chlorine, and three oxygen. Those three oxygen atoms make it really unstable. It really wants to get rid of that extra oxygen and give it to other materials to combust them. Chloric acid is also unstable enough that it often breaks down into perchloric acid, chlorine dioxide, chlorine, oxygen, and water. So let me show you the chemical equation we're dealing with. Alright, so here's a reaction we're dealing with here. Let me adjust the zoom. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to re be reacting potassium chlorate, this white salt right here, with concentrated sulfuric acid. I have a few milliliters in here. I don't want to make very much of this solution. It's nasty stuff. So what happens is potassium chlorate reacts with sulfuric acid to make chloric acid and potassium sulfate. Now, not all of the um, not all of the potassium chlorate is all going to convert into chloric acid because chloric acid is really unstable. It frequently decomposes. So the concentration is not going to get terribly high. What's going to happen is much of the chloric acid will decompose. There are two possible ways in which it can decompose. Um, the first method of decomposition involves um, forming perchloric acid, also a very strong oxidizing acid, water, chlorine gas, and oxygen. The second method involves um, making more perchloric acid, um, water, and chlorine dioxide. Chlorine dioxide is a really unstable explosive gas. It's very prone to explosive decomposition. So before I conduct this reaction, I'm going to go outside, put a respirator on, and put a face shield on because at any moment, that chlorine dioxide could explosively decompose and send solution splattering everywhere. And I don't want that all over my lab or all over my skin for that matter. Alright, so now that I'm outside, I'm going to test several different materials on the acid. I found that this acid will attack just about any material you put into it. I'm curious to see which reaction will be most violent, which reaction might give off flames, and stuff like that. So I've got magnesium, cotton balls, sulfur, and sugar here. Upon testing the chloric acid on cotton, the, the solution of acids reduced the cotton to carbon, water, and carbon dioxide in several seconds. So I expect these reactions to be pretty violent and splatter solution around, so I'm going to put my respirator on, I'm going to put my face shield on to protect me from the fumes and the acid. Alright, so I'm going to start making the acid now. Now I'm going to add potassium chlorate slowly, little by little. If you add it slowly, it's much less likely that the chlorine dioxide will build up and explosively decompose. <laughs> Back up a bit in case it splatters. The yellow green fumes you see are a mixture of chlorine and chlorine dioxide as well as colorless oxygen. I'll add a little bit more.
Alright, I'm going to stop adding potassium chlorate. I don't want to make too much of the solution at once. It's really nasty stuff. So I'm going to start testing uh, materials on it now. I'm going to start with cotton. Uh, let me stir this a little bit, point it away from my body in case it pops. Alright, I think that's about as concentrated as I'm going to get it. So let me test a bit of cotton on it. And if I've got the concentration high enough, it should tear that cotton apart. I may need to stir it a bit. Yeah, that is why I'm wearing so much safety equipment right now. Very violent reaction, a lot of acid splatter. So I'm going to move on to sugar next. Now I'm going to add just a little bit. That's what I'm wearing this. <laughs> so again, a very violent reaction. The concentration is dropping, so the reactions will get progressively less violent as I continue testing on it. So I'm going to go on to sulfur next. I'm saving the more reactive materials for last, since I'm a little scared of reacting them with, with um, really concentrated chloric uh, acid. Alright, next up, sulfur. See if I can get a bit on the... There we go. Again, a very violent reaction. Next up, magnesium. I'm a little nervous with magnesium, as it is the most reactive material of what we're dealing with here. So we're reacting a bit with the sulfur there. Let me get a strip off. Alright, I've got a magnesium strip right here. I'm going to drop it in and back away. A very violent reaction with magnesium too. Not all of it's reacted, I believe I've used up most of my solution now. So I'm going to get 
Let's go get a solution of baking soda to neutralize the solution. Alright, so now I'm going to neutralize the solution using baking soda, otherwise known as sodium bicarbonate. Then I can take off my respirator. Yeah, that's why I left my face shield and respirator on. It undergoes a violent reaction even with baking soda. I keep neutralizing it. Alright, so I've destroyed most of the acid now, so I'm going to go take my respirator off so you guys can hear me better. Alright. So we've got a yellow solution right here remaining. The yellow comes from remaining dissolved chlorine dioxide. Now, chlorine dioxide, as the yellow-green gas you were seeing, mixed with chlorine, is a very unstable and explosive gas, but in solution it's pretty stable. It's used as a disinfectant, much like bleach is. So as you can see, this acid will tear apart just about anything you expose it to. Alright, so as you can see, chloric acid is really nasty stuff. So unless you've got the right safety equipment and background knowledge, I do not recommend ever trying to make this stuff. But it's very, very cool. It's very, very fun to watch it tear apart just about anything you put into the solution. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.